Hi, my name is Dr. Paul Thomas, and I'm a chiropractic neurologist specializing in functional neurology. Functional neurology is the science of improving someone's nervous system through brain-based exercises. I specialize now in these complex functional cases. Medical professionals, other healthcare professionals, they're trained to look for pathology, something physically wrong with a person. So they look at an MRI, look for a problem that they can physically see. They look at blood labs to see if there's physical problems that they can pin a pathology to. The difference is that we take the time to look for the weak areas of the brain that can cause their symptoms because we work in the realm of uh, non-pathology or functional problems. So we may look at an MRI and it may be clear, but their pupil is still not functioning like the other pupil. What we try to do is find the weak areas, stimulate it, make it stronger, and then once it catches up to the strong side, then we can strengthen both of them together. But we build equality in the system. Again, no one is trained to look at the body this way. There's a small... Patients, when they go through the exam, we first make sure that the system is working. But then, once we understand that the system is working, then we want to see how is it functioning. For example, if you look at someone's eyes, their pupils, the little dark spots, should be equal from side to side. They should also constrict when you shine a light into one eye. Both pupils should constrict. But if one constricts slower than the other, or one is larger than the other, then that's a functional problem. That's where we step in, and that's what we specialize in, and that's what we're looking to do for the community. Well, a couple years ago, I was hanging out with a friend. We were out shopping, and my friend noticed that my left pupil was dilated much larger than my right pupil. So we scheduled an appointment with an ophthalmologist. They did a couple different tests, and he determined that I had an 80s dilated pupil and that there wasn't really anything I could do with it that I would just be like this forever and just deal with it. After my mom had actually talked to Kevin, he had suggested that he do a couple tests to see what might be going on with my eye so that hopefully we could correct it and I wouldn't have this issue for the rest of my life. The pupil was normal, so there was no pathology, but clearly you were able to see that the uh, left pupil was larger. The head tilt, again, there's no pathology to explain the head tilt, but there was a head tilt to the left. Romberg's was normal. There's no pathology showing up with the Romberg's test, but she did have a sway. Her initial sway was to the right. Single leg stance clearly was normal. She was able to do it, but if you watch carefully, she had less balance on the right leg. Pinky to nose, she was able to hit her target. Again, there's no pathology, but she was less accurate on the with the right pinky. Convergence was normal. The eyes were able to converge, but the left eye was weaker than the right because it did fail. It couldn't hold the constriction as long. The optokinetics were normal because she was able to do them, but they were poor in both directions. Same with her pursuits, following my finger. She was able to do it, but how her eyes followed my finger was poor in all directions. And same thing with the saccades. She was able to do, to do the saccades, but they were weak in both directions. Okay, now let's take our findings and translate it over to this uh, quadrant over here. The pupil being larger on the left tells me that there's a functional problem with the autonomic regulation of the pupil on the left side. So that is a left cortical uh, problem. Head tilt. You tend to, to laterally flex or tilt your head to the stronger side of the cerebellum. So in this case, she laterally flexed to the left, telling me that the left cerebellum is stronger than the right. So I'm going to write down the weakness. So right cerebellum, there was a functional weakness. Romberg's test, she swayed, her initial sway was to the right, and that has to do with the cerebellum. So I'm going to put another check mark here. Single leg stance, again, function of the cerebellum. She was, uh, had poor balance on the right side, greater than the left. So another check mark comes over here. 
Pinky to nose, same thing, cerebellar test, telling you that the right side has a functional uh, weakness. Convergence, she had problems with convergence with the left eye. That uh, is a little bit more complex, but that can be a check mark back up here on the left cortex. The optic kinetics, the pursuits, and the saccades, we were unable to isolate our left to right, so we're going to leave those out. Now, the left brain, again, is linked directly with the right cerebellum. So, by looking at this quadrant, this chart here, we can clearly see that there's a left cortical and a right cerebellar dysfunction. Everything, uh, there was no pathology, everything was in the normal quadrant, but there was cl clearly a functional imbalance in the system. And that's what this quadrant shows. So in order to treat this patient, we have to take into consideration the functional weaknesses that we found. So there was clearly left cortical functional weaknesses, or brain, and there was right cerebellar weaknesses. So the left brain does voluntary movement on the right side of the body. That's that 10% system. So if we uh, want to do any therapy or treatment on this patient, we want to make sure we isolate it to the right side of the body because chiropractic, massage, acupuncture to the right side of the body is going to fire into the right cerebellum and then also fire into the left uh, brain, strengthening that weak link that we found during our examination. Once we find equality in the right cerebellum and the left brain with the other half of the nervous system, then that's when we will modify or change our therapy to take care of both sides. Now the therapy that we want to do has to be isolated to the right side. Now it doesn't matter what therapy you use. If you're a massage therapist, use what you were taught in school. If you're a chiropractor, use the techniques that you were taught in school. Same thing with acupuncture, occupational therapy. But what you're doing now is you're going to modify those techniques and therapies to only stimulate the right side of the body so you can activate that right cerebellum and that left brain. So now that we have all the exam findings on this patient, we now need to determine what exercises will best fit her to get her well. So now we know that there's a right cerebellar deficiency and there's a left cortical, a cortical or cortex that is weak. So we can do massage therapy on this individual. We can do some deep tissue work on her right side, but we can also do something to sedate this side with massage, which is more a light touch massage, effleurage, or something on this end. Uh, when it comes to massage, uh, acupuncture, we can do some stimulating points on the right shoulder, hip, leg, uh, even neck. Uh, but we can also do some sedation points as an acupuncturist would do on the left side. And that would help out as well. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to elevate uh, the function of the right cerebellum and the left brain. Once that is achieved, then we can do exercises that are more balanced, that are more bilateral or equilateral. So we can do it on both sides, both the right and the left. But until that time, what we need to do is do some strengthening exercises. Uh, a cerebellar exercise uh, that she did not do as well on was a standing leg raise. And uh, when she closed her eyes, she drifted to uh, the right side. So that in and of itself can be an exercise for her to do at home where she would be standing on that leg and closing her eyes uh, until she gets better and better and better at that task. Another uh, therapy for uh, left brain could be a smell, a particular smell. Smells are so powerful and the right side smell will go to the right side brain. A left side smell will go to the left side brain. So it's really, really important. It brings back the blood supply, it lights up the brain, and it allows it to function much better. So smells are really awesome. Uh, she could also follow fingers to different planes where she was weakened in. So there's a lot of different areas that she can do there. So as this patient is doing a particular therapy or exercise or treatment, um, if her pulse is going down, then we know that this treatment, therapy, or exercise is doing well. It, once her pulse starts going up or her oxygen levels are going down, then we know 
that this exercise therapy or treatment needs to stop and halt at that point and tell her pulse rate and oxygen levels return to normal, a re normal resting state. After that is done and achieved, then she can resume that exercise therapy or treatment. But it's very important not to push past her metabolic rate.